Now at 6, we're tracking some showers and thunderstorms moving through the area. I'll give you all the details straight ahead. Plus, the state's only gubernatorial candidate on the Democratic primary ballot makes a campaign stop in the Pine Belt. What issues he says are resonating with voters straight ahead. And later on, the fallout continues after Carly Russell admits to lying about her abduction. Now, Alabama officials look to press more charges. Your News at 6 starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 6. Well, good evening, Pine Bell, and welcome in. It's Saturday, 6 o'clock, and I'm Kyra Lampley. It looks like the heat isn't letting up this weekend with more high temperatures on the way. So we're going to get things started off with our first alert weather team. Hannah, it's supposed to be super duper hot tomorrow. Or to, our tonight shower is going to help cool us down a little bit. I really wish that they would, Kyra. Unfortunately, it's just going to be way too hot for any showers to give us any kind of hope as we go into early next week and even tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be hot as well, but for right now, it's still pretty hot out there. We're only going to get hotter as we go throughout the, the middle of the week, though. So let's check out our radar right now. You can see some scattered th showers and thunderstorms across the area. Now, earlier we did have one severe thunderstorm warning. Since then, obviously, that has decreased down into a slight rain shower um, up in the northern portions of the Pine Belt. You can see some other areas of the Pine Belt over in Collins, Bay Springs, getting some light rain over there in those areas. Other than that, though, most of us are sitting pretty clear across the area, and unfortunately, we're still into the 80s and 90s, feeling much hotter out there. It's going to be really, really hot as we go throughout the rest of the evening. You notice temperatures are going to get down into the 80s by 11 p.m. this evening. It's going to be a very hot and humid night across the Pine Belt with scattered showers and thunderstorms possible until around 8 p.m. this evening. And as for tomorrow and the rest of the week, I'll give you the rest of the details coming up later in the show. Well, thank you for that, Hannah. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Brandon Presley made a stop in Purvis today. During the stop, Presley spoke to a small crowd of supporters, touching on various topics such as food, taxes, and the price of car tags. Presley says his campaign will continue throughout Mississippi, including areas that are predominantly Republican. We have an 82 county strategy in, in our campaign to make sure we're communicating all over the state our message of cleaning up state government, saving our hospitals, cutting the sales tax uh, on car tags, excuse me, taking the sales tax off of groceries and cutting car tag fees in half. And it's a message that's resonating. And Presley is currently the only candidate on the Democratic primary ballot. Primaries will take place on August 8th. And circuit clerk offices across Mississippi were open today from 8 a.m. to noon for in-person absentee voting for the August 8th primary election. Oh. Staff at the Forest County Circuit Clerk's Office said only four people voted absentee. And the last day to vote absentee will be next Saturday, August the 5th. Circuit clerk's offices will be open from 8 a.m. to noon that day as well. And if you mail in an absentee ballot, it must be postmarked by August 8th and received by your circuit clerk's office by August 15th at 5 p.m. in order to be counted. And an update, the fallout over lying to police may not be over for Carly Russell. The Alabama nursing student is now charged after admitting she made up her abduction. The state attorney general says he is looking into whether more charges should be filed. Tina Kim explains why the local police chief says he is frustrated by the case. Alabama Station WVTM captured Carly Russell Friday at her attorney's office on the same day she surrendered to Hoover police. Authorities charged her with two low-level counts of false reporting after she admitted she fabricated her kidnapping. The hoax launched a 49-hour search for the 26-year-old nursing student. I know many are shocked and appalled that Miss Russell is only being charged with two misdemeanors. Despite all the panic and disruption her actions caused. Let me assure you, I too share the same frustration, but existing laws only allow the charges that were filed to be filed. On July 13th, Russell called 911 saying she saw a toddler on the side of the road. Her family then could not locate her for the next two days until she turned up at her home. Police said they could not verify Russell's story of the child or the man with, quote, orange hair that she said abducted her. They did find Russell had done online searches for the kidnapping thriller Taken. 
Upon Hoover Police's request, Alabama's Attorney General is now overseeing the case. One thing I would add is that we don't see this as a victimless crime. We will continue to monitor this investigation to determine whether or not there are any additional charges that need to be brought. It's still not clear why Russell made up the stories, which could lead up to a year in jail and a $6,000 fine. Advocates for missing persons of color call the ordeal an anomaly, stressing it will not undermine their efforts to find nearly 6,000 victims who, quote, actually need our help. I'm Tina Kim reporting. And again, Carly Russell is now out on bail. And looking around the pie about now, local churches are helping children get ready for the new school year. In Hattiesburg, the congregation of South 28 Avenue Baptist Church hosted their annual back to school bash. It featured food and lots of fun activities for kids. Backpacks were also handed out for free. And over at Shady Grove Baptist Church, church members there hosted this annual backpack giveaway and community rally. Children got free backpacks of their choice and they could also get free hair cuts, hamburgers, and hot dogs. We got us some food and we had got us some school supplies and backpacks and stuff. And they had like fun things we can do. I think that is like really helpful for like all the kids that really are unfortunate and like don't really have money to buy stuff. So I think that it's like good for them. And many vendors offering various community services also participated in the event at Shady Grove Baptist Church. And don't forget, today is your last chance to save money on back to school supplies. Mississippi sales tax holiday comes to a close at midnight tonight. And until then, you do not have to pay the 7% sales tax on back to school items like clothing, shoes, and school supplies if each item costs $100 or less. And there are some, some exceptions and you can find a full guide online at the Mississippi Department of Revenue's website. That's D-O-R, D-O-R dot ms dot gov and students at Perry Central High School will now have the opportunity to host their own daily news show. RJ Harrison has more on how the school is giving students a look into the world of broadcasting. Starting this year, students at Perry Central High School will be writing, producing, and reporting for their own daily news show titled 98 News. Last year, I reached out to Tim Walker. Uh, with WDAM um, inquiring about the interest that we had to start a broadcasting program. Within a matter of days, he says, I've got the thing for you. So uh, WDAM was able to donate their uh, studio. Principal Joshua Yeager says students will cover all things Perry County and gain several technical and creative skills in addition to earning class credit. This program is going to enrich the curriculum with our ELA and business and marketing classes that we offer. It's going to help with narrative writing. It's going to help with editing features. Uh, also with our technology students, with the, the equipment that we have ordered, they're going to be able to learn top-notch mechanics um, of technological engineering. For senior Ariana Bolton, the show will allow her to use her personality to connect with others. I'm very informative, so I think I'll bring a lot of information, and I also think I'll bring a lot of enthusiasm and school spirit with the broadcasting. I think I'll definitely have a very cheerful spirit, and it'll definitely um, generate to other people. The show is expected to air around August 14th, with students starting equipment training next week. In Perry County, I'm Jay Harrison, WDAM7, on your side. And students will be able to work on the show during and after school. The principal says the school has partnered with the USM School of Communication for several projects throughout the year. And coming up for you at 6, as summer travel heats up, gas prices climb. The White House says it's keeping a close eye on the pumps straight ahead. And we're going to have a hot, hot, hot week here in the Pine Belt. I'll give you all the details you need to know coming up after the break. It's time to go back to school. Send your back to school pictures online so your students can be shown too. 